virtual worlds were all the rage of the early 2000s, with games like Club Penguin, Toontown, and Webkins having a special place in my 8-year-old heart. There was something just so appealing about customizing your character, getting exclusive items, and interacting with other players. This foolproof formula made virtual worlds popular at the time, and as a result, everyone, and I mean everyone, was creating one. If you were an already established company, it made sense to get on board with virtual worlds. And on the other side, there were websites seemingly coming out of nowhere that were gaining traction as well. There were some pretty obscure virtual worlds, but what if I told you that the fast food chain McDonald's not only used Happy Meal toys and playgrounds to attract kids, they also launched a virtual world of their own. The virtual world was launched in 2008 and it was called Mickworld. But this game was not free without controversy. Whether it be parents being angry that their kids were being advertised to by McDonald's, or its run-ins with the FTC, this game had its fault. And today we are going to be doing a deep dive on the forgotten controversial game, Mickworld. Now Mickworld is not to be confused with Mickworld, which was coined in the 1995 book Jihad vs. Mickworld, how globalism and tribalism are reshaping the world. In this case, Mickworld refers to globalization and the corporate control of the political process obviously. The term Mickworld was also used by McDonald's themselves. In the 1990s, McDonald's ran an ad campaign called Mickworld. This campaign involved kids fantasizing what the world would look like if they were in charge. As you can imagine, they had a lot of awesome ideas. The 2008 Flash game also ran with the theme of it's a kid's world where kids rule. In the online game, Mickworld players were able to create a free account and could customize their own avatars, which were creatively named MPals. I would have gone with Mickpal, but to each their own. Similar to most virtual worlds, there were different places where you could take your characters. Mini games, a place to adopt pets, a treehouse, and you were able to talk to other players with predetermined phrases. Honestly, the very basics of this game were nothing special, but I think where Mickworld was really able to stand out was through their partnered and branded content. Allow me to explain. M codes were included in the toy of every Happy Meal. These M codes would then be used to get an item in the game. So for example, one month McDonald's had Power Rangers Happy Meal toys, so each Power Ranger Happy Meal toy would come with a code that could get you a costume in the game. Now, M codes actually got you more than just costumes. A Transformer M code let you meet Optimus Prime. A Ben 10 M code turned your M pal into an alien. One gave your M pal superpowers. One gave you a lightsaber, and another let you shoot lasers out of your eye. When you were given an M code, oftentimes you were presented with different options of an item that you could redeem. So, if you were a kid and you wanted every item, that would require you to have to go several times a month because McDonald's would rotate their items once a month. It was smart to offer kids exclusive and cool items because kids love exclusive and cool items. As a kid, when I was playing this game, I used to think I was the coolest person in the world when I was walking around with like something that I had gotten from a Happy Meal. It was like, look guys, I, I paid for this. Like I'm really cool. And by me saying that I paid for it, um, I, I didn't. My, my parents did. It's funny to look back at these virtual worlds. I mean, essentially, it was just a way for us to flaunt our parents' money. I mean, that's that's kind of what it was. Oh, you mean to tell me you're not a Club Penguin member? Uh, don't talk to me. Outside of the M codes, they seem to integrate partnered content into the game. For example, in preparation for the Megamind movie, if you remember that cinematic masterpiece, they renamed one of their superhero headquarters to Megaopolis. They also had a Find Alvin campaign where you had to find Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks to get free prizes. And I'll be honest, they could have done so much better here. Like, what is this? So it's safe to say that Mickworld was just one big advertisement, but how does this make it different than the other virtual worlds? I mean, other virtual worlds were all designed to just sell kids a product. Bearville's goal was to bring players to build a bear stores, Webkin's goal was to get kids to buy more Webkin's, and Club Penguin's goal was to get kids to buy memberships. But what makes Mickworld different is that they were trying to get kids to eat McDonald's. And McDonald's can include all the milk and apples as they want, but that does not distract from the fact that those burgers and fries aren't healthy. In a 2011 interview with QSR, research advisor and independent consultant at Yukon Rudd Center for Food Policy and Health, Jennifer Harris said she believed that companies like McDonald's advertising to kids through virtual worlds could be dangerous, even more dangerous than traditional advertising. Quote, children spend a lot of time on these sites, so it's not like a TV ad where the ad is 15 or 30 seconds, Harris says. Children sit down to play games and they're immersed in messages about the brand for as long as they 
want to stay on the website. And a lot of times they stay 15 or 20 minutes a sitting. And this is backed up by research. A 2011 study cited in the Public Health Advocacy Institute found that food company websites with advert games resulted in youth spending 88% more time per visit on sites with advert games than sites that didn't have them. Advertising fast food is not exactly the best optically speaking, considering that in 2011 to 2012, the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey estimated that 16.9% of kids aged 2 to 19 were obese. Another concern that critics had is that kids didn't know that they were being advertised to. They just thought they were playing a game. In 2011, Mark Smale, Senior Vice President of Creda, the Australian company that created McWorld for McDonald's, was interviewed by the New York Times and was questioned on this. Smale's argument was that Mickworld was not all about getting kids to buy Happy Meals. Quote, it's not overtly aimed at trying to sell a product, Mr. Smale said. If it is, the people you're trying to reach won't be interested. They won't be engaged. Smale is essentially saying, yes, it's wrong to only be promoting our Happy Meals and our website only being a reason for kids to go and buy Happy Meals, but we're offering them a game. We're offering them an experience. We're so much more than just an advertisement. In this same article, a McDonald's spokesperson person said that they are following industry standards and guidelines and that they weren't doing anything illegal. Now to be fair they do say hey kids this is advertising in really small print at the top of the website and they do have it throughout the game as well and ultimately this game in and of itself wasn't anything illegal. You could argue the ethics or morality of the game advertising McDonald's to children but they weren't doing anything that would get them in trouble with the law. Personally looking back at this game I certainly have my reservations with this game, and this is coming from someone that ate this game up as a kid. Uh, n no pun intended. But despite McDonald's being off the hook in that case, McDonald's did eventually face some legal trouble with the game. In 2012, 17 groups filed a joint complaint to the Federal Trade Commission claiming that several major corporations, including McDonald's, were targeting kids illegally. Some of the groups that filed this complaint include the Center for Digital Democracy, Consumer Federation of America, Consumer Watchdog, and Rudd Center for Food Policy and Obesity at Yale, just to name a few. The complaint argued that there were many aspects of Mickworld that included unfair and deceptive marketing and that some of the practices violated COPPA. COPPA, which stands for Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, was an act created in 1998. According to Epic.org, COPPA specifically aims to protect the privacy of children under the age of 13 by requesting parental consent from the collection or use of any personal information of the users. But the complaint mainly focuses on Mickworld's refer a friend marketing. The complaint lists that Mickworld had 16 minigames on their websites, and one of the groups in this complaint tested five of them and found that five of the games they tested collected personal information, and at least three of them actually collected photos and names of users and the names and email addresses of their friends. To demonstrate this practice of collecting personal data, the complaint analyzed the game Suzy Van Zoom, in which you are able to control a cartoon girl on a bicycle. You are able to earn points and boost your character's speed by collecting Happy Meals. Here, as you can see, they're trying to associate Happy Meals with something good, like super fast speed, because we all know eating McDonald's helps us become more athletic. After the game is over, there's an option for children to invite friends. The child must first accept a quick reminder of the site's privacy policy, because they're definitely reading that, and then they are able to enter up to five friends' names and emails addresses. There were also three activities in the game where children are encouraged to upload photos of themselves to create an e-card or music video, and then from there they could share it with their friends. So how does this violate COPPA? The COPPA rule defines personal information as individually identifiable information about an individual collected online. The COPPA rule defines collect as the gathering of any personal information from a child by any means, including but not limited to requesting that children submit personal information online. Collecting e emails falls under this category. The complaint argued that McDonald's wasn't adequately disclosing its collection of personal data, and it didn't ask for parents' permission to collect this information like another player's emails. Players were able to submit the emails of their friends, but the friends' parents never consented to their emails being shared. Now I will say my one question with this is, what nine-year-old has another nine-year-old's email? When I was a kid and was playing these games, I didn't know my friends' email addresses. I don't think they had email addresses. I assume most of them just had their parents' email 
email addresses. But even then, I didn't know what those were. So like, I wouldn't be sending anything to anyone. It just seems like a feature that's kind of pointless and that wasn't really used. I may be wrong. Maybe everyone was sending emails to each other back in the day, but I don't think I ever sent an email to one of my friends. But after all that, the outside pressure actually got McDonald's to remove the refer a friend feature. Quote, rest assured, the online security of our guests, especially our youngest guests, remains a top priority for us, said Dana Proud, a spokesperson for McDonald's. We continuously review and enhance our sites as appropriate, and we recently made some updates to HappyMeal.com, including removing the forward to a friend option. Despite the questionable marketing tactics and running with the FTC, Mickworld had a six-year run, which for an online virtual world that was fairly obscure is not bad at all. I think the game ending in 2014 makes sense because McDonald's clearly had enough resources to promote this game and they were able to make it go longer than other virtual worlds, but I imagine once 2014 hit, it just wasn't profitable anymore. There was not really a lot of information about this game online, so when I was doing research, I had to rely on memory, and also I had to look back at 10-year-old articles and videos about this game. While I was digging online, I found some reviews that I thought you might enjoy, so let's read some of them. Gail Typewriter writes, Dumb. Uh, very informative, thank you. One review says, and bear with me, this review is quite the trip, so be prepared. Telling kids eat grease, salt, and butter. Yum. Yeah, everything on their menu, including the salad, has sugar in it. Yeah, great restaurant. They don't even buy meat from America anymore. I mean, come on. Just watch Super Size Me sometime. For those unfamiliar, that's a documentary about a man who eats only McDonald's for a month straight, and it goes about how you would expect. I found a blog post that a parent wrote written on Mother's Day of 2013 titled, A Letter to McDonald's, My Mother's Day Wish. Hashtag mom's not loving it. In the article, Jessica Gottlieb voices her displeasure with McDonald's efforts to advertise to kids and references her displeasure with Mickworld. Now, despite this game having a lot of critics, there were a lot of people that had fond memories of this game. Hey, this is Cassie speaking here, and I think Mickworld is cool and fun. But where you will find the most praise of this game is through the YouTube comment section, where you find 10-year-old videos documenting Mickworld and everyone just kind of uses it as a way to just let out all their nostalgia and just talk about their old memories. Kenny says, seeing the Mickworld homepage brought so many memories back. We all thought this was a lost fever dream we all collectively had. I'm happy my mind decided to make this game vaguely appear in my brain for the first time in the past decade. One common theme about this game is that a lot of people for a long time forgot that this game existed, and that's why documentation of these games is so important because a lot of people will just play this game as a kid and then never think about it again. Again, there were a lot of comments and even a change.org petition to get McDonald's to bring back this game. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's just not gonna happen. I see this all the time on my Bearville video where people are like, oh, I miss Bearville so much. Build-A-Bear needs to bring it back. And what you have to understand is that these companies like Build-A-Bear and McDonald's can't rely on nostalgia to make a profitable game. Because sure, they might have a couple hundred passionate 20 year olds just trying to relive the glory days of fifth grade but that's not enough to sustain an actual game. As a fan-made revival, I'm sure it's possible, but that takes a dedicated amount of people. Take Bearville, for example. They're a group of developers working on a rewritten version for completely free, but it got to be so much that they're all taking a break from recreating the game because they all have real lives, school, and jobs. I think one game that has done a good job at a successful fan-made revival is Toontown Rewritten, and even then, the game can only really get like a thousand to two thousand players on it at a time. I don't think Disney would ever consider launching a game that had this inactive of a player base. It just doesn't make sense. Now one thing I didn't realize when making this video is that McDonald's actually had another game called Happy Studio. This lasted from 2011 to 2015 and from what I can understand was a game that ran in Europe. There is very little documentation of this game online and it's even more difficult for me to talk about considering I never played this game as a kid because I lived in America. But here is what I was able to gather. McDonald's Europe partnered with Fuel to create this game. After one year, the game had 2 million registered users. It was aimed at 4 to 8 year olds, available in 41 countries, and required parents' consent to create an account. The game was very adamant about the fact that there were no food or product promotions on their website. The following is a quote from Fuel's SVP of Business Development. Quote, McDonald's really is looking to be a responsible corporate marketer. Part of this is a conscious decision not to include any food or McDonald's products in Happy Studio. You may see fruit, vegetables, and water from time to time because we want to get a positive message to kids 
and are looking at things in a balanced way. Which is a little ironic coming from McDonald's, but I appreciate the thought. The game's content typically reflected what was going on with the Happy Meals, so you would have games that would be pretty much the same as whatever the Happy Meal toy was. Now, despite there being no direct promotion, the game is filled with McDonald's branding. From what I understand, this game did not feature M codes like Mickworld did. They created content related to the Happy Meal toys to kind of get kids in the, the mindset like, oh, they have Pokemon related uh, Happy Meal toys today. I should go get one. But it's not like they were promising any exclusive items like Mickworld was. So this is just a guess, but I imagine it might have been less effective to get kids into the stores through the game. I will say, from the gameplay I've seen, this just looks like a 3D upgraded version of Mickworld. It actually looks like something I would have loved as a kid. I am curious to know how this game performed financially, considering they didn't have the allure of M codes to get kids into the stores. Well, I guess we don't need to wonder because one of the developers said on YouTube that it shut down because of money. So, uh, there there you go. One of the contributors of the McDonald's wiki, and uh, one of the things I've realized through making these videos, is that there is a wiki for pretty much everything. But in 2021, one of the contributors, ZK Gaming, announced that he is remaking the game under his company, B Social Games. He said that they would be decorating the map and creating the city, and that the game would be on Roblox. Now, I will say, the young man running this ambitious project seems really young, so I really do respect him trying to take on this project. It certainly takes a lot of ambition, and when I was his age, I definitely could not have been doing that. So what I'll be doing is I'll be linking the game down below, and I'll be linking down his website, so I would really appreciate if you went over there and just showed him some support. I'm sure he would really appreciate that. In conclusion, the developers of these games created something that a lot of kids like myself look back fondly on. At the same time, it's impossible to recognize this game's legacy without looking back at some of the controversies and rather negative things about the game. But that's it for today's video. Please let me know what you thought of this format. Did you play this game as a kid? Please let me know in the comments down below. If you made it this far, please consider subscribing for more kind a deep dive content like this. Give me some ideas down below if there's anything you want to see me talk about. Also, make sure to leave a like and uh, what's the other thing? Oh, I already told you to comment, subscribe. Yeah, do all that, please. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry that I've been rather inactive. I started a new job about four or five months ago and I've been kind of just getting into that and becoming comfortable there. But now I'm ready to start this YouTube thing again and I'm really excited. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.